In this video, you will see Julian and Alyssa look at a photo of the Blue Jays pitcher swinging at a baseball. They'll try to approximate the speed of the baseball at the moment the photo was taken. As they work, consider the understandings they express and determine if their reasoning is valid. Well, I mean, like, in the moment, of the, like, in the photo, the ball doesn't, like, appear to be moving because it's, like, instantaneous. Like, there's no time really happening. Like... Like at the second, well, the moment that the photo is being taken, like there's no time happening, mm -hmm. and like for speed, we need, like, it's like, like um, a change in time. Yeah, it's like like distance over time. But if we don't mm -hmm. have any time, we can't really be moving. No, I agree with that. I just, I think what I'm struggling with is like, in a baseball game, you know, the pitcher is throwing the ball from the mound to the catcher. So it's like from point A to point B and in that time the batter is swinging. So like there is movement and like there is a change in time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we're only seeing like that one little like, like instantaneous mm -hmm. like moment. Well, I think maybe like to show, to, I guess to show the, the change of time and the change of position, I guess the picture should, in my opinion, have some blur, like some motion in it, like mm -hmm. have that motion in it. Yeah, because it's not like cameras are perfect, so. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to see right now. Yeah. I'll probably zoom in. But we definitely need to know, like, how long it took the camera to take the photo. Yeah, yeah. Because that would give us, like, the time aspect that we need. And we, I'm taking we also need the like again the point A to point B. So I'm assuming the first blur we see to the last part of the blur we see. So everything that's blurry just go end to end. So it's kind of hard to tell, but like here ish to like here ish. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then like we don't want to take like like so this point here is like this side of the ball so we wouldn't want to take like that the like very end of the blur mm -hmm. i think we need to take out like the length like or the diameter of the ball i guess is the better word so that we can get from like like um so we can get like the distance but not like over counting yeah yeah yeah, yeah no i agree um, our speed is going to be like change in distance over change in time. Mm -hmm. I guess to find the change of distance, we take the length of the blurry minus the diameter of the baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So at the moment the picture was taken, the ball was traveling 65 miles per hour. I don't think it's like at that moment because we did say it was um like we did incorporate like the change in time so it's not at that moment it's still like that see, interval of time even if it's like so so small yeah 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 um so i guess it's the velocity over the interval i see which yeah. no, i think you're right is like i think like our best approximation for the moment the photo mm -hmm. was taken because we have such a small interval. Because like we said before, like we can't really have like change in time over like an instantaneous moment. Yeah. yeah. So we need like so that's that right, interval. It's approximately sixty five miles per hour because of that interval. Yeah, I think so. I see. No, I agree with that. Actually, it makes sense. In this video, Julian and Alyssa computed the speed of the baseball over an interval of time, but weren't sure how to compute the speed at a particular moment in time. We'll explore how to think about this problem in upcoming videos.